Former insiders are warning Americans about the dangers of a second Trump term. In a new forward to his book, former Trump national security advisor John Bolton writes, quote, nothing in politics is inevitable. And facts, even now, can shape politics. Facts are blunt instruments. And a mountain of facts demonstrates that Trump is unfit to be president. Former U.N. Ambassador John Bolton joins us here at the table. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, welcome. It's so good to have you. Yes, thank you for being here. Uh, so, so, so you want to take that first one? Because I know, know she's been chomping. She's I, <laughs> I read your, I read your op-ed in the Wall Street Journal that you, um, uh, that you know, you have a, your book is out again in paperback, right. and you refresh the foreword, and there's an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal from, I believe, January 31st. And then I saw Donald Trump last night, <laughs> and I feel like there's some synergy here. I want to play for you what um, Donald Trump said last night in Conway, South Carolina, about NATO. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. You got to pay your bills. The them is Russia that he is talking about. You write in the Wall Street Journal that Mr. Trump will act on his desire to withdraw from the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. He came precariously close in 2018. The Supreme Court has never ruled authoritatively whether the president can abrogate Senate-ratified treaties, but presidents have regularly done so. Congress, at the end of last year, passed a bill to say presidents can't just withdraw from NATO, but you hear that from Donald Trump. You wrote these words that I'm reading in January. Right. Look, uh, that statute that you mentioned is almost certainly unconstitutional. Uh, I've, I've been with presidents withdrawing from treaties. The Senate has no role in it. And I just think people need to take Donald Trump very seriously. Uh, too many people don't. Supporters of Trump and even opponents of Trump, when he says he wants to get out of NATO, I think it's a very real threat. And it will have dramatically negative implications for the United States, not just in the North Atlantic, but worldwide. <laughs> That's the part that I, I don't understand, uh, why people don't take him seriously uh, and why they don't appreciate what he's already tried to do and, and has done in some instances um, in, in the face of what he's telling us he's going to do. You write uh, uh, with regard to the constitutional crisis uh, in your new forward, quote, if we turn to office, Trump will need others to carry out his directives. He will rant White House. He will want White House staffers to follow his orders without asking troubling questions. As testimony in the classified documents case demonstrates, these staffers will not be known for independent creative thinking, just personal personal fealty to Trump, for whom loyalty flows only one way. Why don't people appreciate that? Why don't they see that he's trying to build a sycophantic army of, of I'm calling them zombies, MAGA zombies, to do as he's in, instructing them to do? What is the disconnect that people don't seem to get that you now have uh, and have warned about in your new forward? Well, I think people uh, really don't believe it could be as bad as it might be. I mean, I think a Trump victory risks continuing constitutional crisis. I think we'll survive it. I don't think democracy is threatened, but I think we could suffer a lot of damage. And uh, I and many others have tried in different ways to convince, especially Republicans, that this is serious. Uh, but as you say, we have not been successful so far. And I think what it reflects is that many of the people who support Trump support him because he hates the same people that they hate. And they don't care what he's prepared to do uh, to try and, and solve that problem. And, and, and that is something that uh, I think really Republicans bear responsibility for. We, we, we got him into office in the first place. We need to get him out of office. The getting out of office part, Simone, is is, is the, the tricky part, That's because tricky we were part. just talking in the last uh, segment uh, about the polling right now, where Biden is losing on, on the economy. He's losing on the border, which is sort of a quasi, you know, po a foreign policy issue, if you will. Um, what do you think it will take for the Biden administration uh, to begin to... Uh, echo what you're saying and, and really get people in juxtaposition of, of what the reality out there uh, to understand we have an ex existential threat in front of us, and it's in the form of this guy. And he means, when he says he wants to be a dictator for a day... He means it. He means and specifically, it. like, Republicans, because I think the president has been clear about his democracy message. You know, right. he's gone out and given speech right. after speech after speech about democracy. But, I mean, 
What are Republicans privately saying? What are the conversations you're having? Well, I think you don't got to name names, but you can if you'd like. We'll take that. <laughs> I think many Republicans uh, say this is a binary choice, and as bad as Trump is, and and there are many who will say exactly that. Uh, it's uh, it's not as bad as Biden or his potential successor, Kamala Harris. I, look, I personally think we've got two people running for president, neither one of whom is fit for office. Uh, and I think that... The, you, the, the, you're the, talking you about asked, Trump and Joe both, Biden. Both of them, that's right. Yeah, Michael, you asked about what... Uh, what the Biden administration could do. I think the president needs to leave the stage gracefully. I think the Democrats need to switch generationally who they're running for president. By the way, Republicans could learn that lesson, too. I don't. I think people don't appreciate how unpopular Biden is. It's not a question of messaging. They look at him. They think he's too old. That's a surrogate for competence. Uh, and and I, don't, I don't see Biden being able to fix that. I think a different Democrat could say, I don't have to defend all the Biden baggage and could defeat Trump. But right now, you've got a large group of people who don't like either candidate. And in November, the only question is, who do they dislike more? The other person will win. We don't know that at the moment, but it could very well be Trump. Well, to pick up on that, Ambassador Bolton, hi, Alicia Menendez, good morning. If you say that Trump is unfit, you argue that both candidates are unfit, but ultimately it will come down, potentially, to a binary choice of who you like or dislike more, who you decide is more or less fit. You yourself has said, have said if it is this choice, you're not going to vote for President Biden. You're not going to vote for Donald Trump. Instead, you're going to write in the name of another conservative. Anything between now and November, if we accept the premise that it is going to be a choice between these two candidates, that would change your mind. I can't see it. Look, both are unacceptable to me, although for different reasons. Uh, I feel very beleaguered, but I'm not going to vote my principle, violate my principles by, by voting for, for Biden. And I'm not going to vote, uh, not going to risk the Constitution by, by voting for Trump. That's why I haven't given up yet, as high as the Hill looks to be, of stopping Trump before the convention. There are a lot of things moving. Uh, his criminal cases are still out there. Uh, and and uh, a meteor could hit the earth. I mean, there are a lot of things that could happen to stop Trump. But Ambassador Bolton, can I just ask, because of, of, if you don't, because we live in a, I mean, you know, you, you've you been a U.N. ambassador, you've been a national security advisor, you've worked over many administrations, not just Donald Trump's. And while there, this is a two-party system, and so if you do not pick one of the candidates, I mean, people often say, if one is not voting in this race for Joe Biden or Donald Trump, a third-party option or writing a name in does nothing but to support, at this point, the data shows Trump. I mean, you, you say that they're the set, you dislike them for two different reasons, and you think they're both bad candidates, but we just played sound of Donald Trump saying Russia should go invade NATO countries. Meanwhile, Joe Biden has strengthened NATO. So I just, these can't be two sides of the same coin. Well, as I say, they're for different reasons, but uh, it's a matter of conscience for me. I'm not going to violate my principles. Uh, I, I live in Maryland. As Michael knows, the odds are Joe Biden's <laughs> got to carry Maryland, however John Bolton votes. Let, let, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about our family, uh, the Republican Party, uh, and the fact that, um, you know, a lot of us, myself and, and a handful of others back in 15 and 16 were warning, was jumping up and down and saying, do not do this. This man, he, we knew un, then he was unfit. At what point did you realize that? At what point did you say to yourself um, in your conversations with him in 16, 17, 18, oh, my God, what the hell happened here? Mm -hmm. And how did I get this so wrong? Right. Well, I didn't support Trump in 2016. Uh, I, I was with many Republicans right. who said he was our last choice. Uh, I joined the administration because I believed that uh, Trump, like every other president before him, would be impressed by the gravity of the responsibility he had in national security, the weight of the decisions that aged many presidents. It would discipline him. It would require him to think in, uh, in, in national interest terms. And uh, I, I'd spoken to him many times. I don't think anybody's called me naive recently. I think I understood <laughs> what I was getting into. But I thought that pressure would have an effect. It had no effect whatever. Mm -hmm. And I learned it within days of taking the job. Uh, I did what I could for 17 months, uh, but uh, my book is really a 500-page explanation of how I got it wrong. So you got it wrong. 
There will not be people like John Bolton in that administration if Donald Trump is reelected. I can tell you that. Yeah, there, yeah, there are no more Boltons uh, coming coming to Washington for Trump. But Ambassador, we are so happy you are here with us today. Thank you so much for taking the time to be a part of the conversation this weekend. Uh, in the next hour, Congressman Jamie Raskin joins us with his damning.